So Flagsmith is loaded in production environments with critical apps. If it fails, obviously it could crash of the experience of users. Uh, how did you build the resilience and fault tolerance uh, into your architecture? Okay, so yeah, so the, well, the firstly, um, and we tell customers this all the time, is you, you, your application has to behave normally, even if it doesn't get a request back from the platform, right? That's really, really important. So, you know, you open the app and you walk into a lift and the app's opening and now you don't have reception, you're not going to get a result back from Flagsmith, right? So um, the number one single most important thing if you're implementing any flag engine, uh, any flag feature flagging platform is um, don't expect a response from our server, which sounds funny, but, you know, like that happens all the time, right? Like, and, you know, you, I don't know, you, you might have, you might be in a hotel and the DNS is shot to bits in the hotel and the, you know, it's not our fault that you don't get a request back, but you, you don't. Right. So <clears throat> that's a really, really important concept that we tell our customers all the time is um, well, on the front end, anyway, you must really consider flags as kind of like a progressive enhancement, right? Like don't consider them as like my app doesn't work because I don't have access to Flagsmith, right? And for me, like the example I give is your, your app should still work if you're on an airplane and you, and you load the application on your laptop, right? Like, because um, you can't always expect that to, you know, to be available. Um, in terms of the API, we, we do care a lot about, our, you know, P99, 95 latency um, and our uptime. Um, and that was one of the reasons that we built this Edge API um, was uh, that, you know, um, we can rely and lean on uh, AWS and Lambda at Edge to do that. Um, and also uh, lean on DynamoDB global tables to, to, to do that as well. Um, and so our core API, the, the one that answers requests for the dashboard, you know, toggle flags and stuff, that's still containerized and um, fault tolerant in a single AWS region. But the SDK endpoints are, um, are, are, are like edge endpoints. So, you know, and then you get a bunch of free stuff like, um, you know, well, <laughs> Theoretically, right, if, if, um, if AWS EU West 1 goes down, then um, we could, you know, it will naturally, theoretically naturally start routing requests to EU West 2 or, or what have you. Um, and yeah, basically, you know, if the API um, goes down for whatever reason, it's basically like Lambda's down or Dynamo is down. And at that point, you know, it's nothing that we can do anyway. So you know, well, we don't, we don't, we, <laughs> yeah, like, you well, know, 90, 90% kind of, of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's something, you know, there's like a, a Godzilla attacking Europe or something. So, yeah, so that, that was the main, that, the, the, you know, we, that's why we've been working so hard on this Edge API, because it gives us two massive benefits. Well, actually, well, it gives us the third one as well. So it gives us low latency globally. It gives us redundancy and fault tolerance. Um, but it also gives a scale, right? Like um, if I'm running uh, Lambda Edge and DynamoDB, I don't have to worry about Postgres connections. I don't have to worry about, um, you know, uh, like read replicas. I don't have to worry about any of that. It's like I'm leveraging two things that were built for internet scale solutions, right? So um, yeah, so there's three things that, are all working in concert there. Um, and I, I think that's something that we're going to see more is um, like, it's, you know, if you're building front end stuff now, um, you know, like you Vercel, which is amazing. I love the products. Like, you know, it's front ends of a, a edge serve now, right? Like if you're not edge serving your front ends, like, you, you know, you, there's no reason not to really. Um, but I think we're going to see it more, um, on on apis as time goes on which is much harder because you've got to manage state and cap theorem database staff and consistency and all that sort of thing but um we're really lucky because the requests that we're serving at the edge are 
easy they, they only require two documents they require the identity and the and the environment um so we don't have to worry about um transactions or you know a lot of that hard stuff but i do think that we'll see that more and more um where people are have an expectation of um like this you know more you know like state-based stuff being um moved to the edge and like there's we chose dynamo we'd looked really hard at um durable objects by cloudflare which is super interesting um but we have this really kind of difficult problem where uh we have um we you know we generally get one request for an identity um uh, maybe a day and it has to serve that request in like 70 milliseconds right um so we can't cache it because the first request is going to be slow um the data has to live all around the world because i don't know where that request is going to come in from um you know you can't mm, shift that data around which i think like durable objects does a little bit like um regionally depending on like request load because it's just one time that it's going to be requested so we've got some things that work for us and then some things that work against us so that's definitely something that i'm i'm really interested in um and it's kind of interesting to see these different you know it's mainly the data stores right like interesting different solutions to that problem like there's mongodb have one and azure has one and cloudflare have two um aws probably have more than two but i don't know <laughs> what they are but yeah that's i think that area is really interesting by, by moving to the lambda edge you also change the data store to dynamodb or i see i see i see yeah but only for those two things that we care about being replicated mm -hmm. which is the environment data and the identity data everything else is still in in postgres so we have kind of like a, a hybrid i see I see. But then you are still able to do writes on the DynamoDB and it replicates. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah, um, yeah. And they replicate, yeah. Yeah, okay. DynamoDB is an amazing product, like, and the global tables is is really, really, really an amazing product, yeah. You have issues then with, I mean, not issues, but the joins between Postgres and the DynamoDB? No, it just it just writes through from Postgres. Um, and we're still designing how that's going to, how that's going to figure, uh, work out, like, um we're not sure whether they might be completely isolated um you know so if you write an identity to the edge network whether that gets written back into postgres but our plan on our SaaS products is to migrate all of the identity data onto onto dynamo so that we can scale um forever because we have customers with like um you can imagine right with a large number of identity uh records if you too like to debug in production give us a like comment or subscribe. Thank you.